What we're really looking for is an ambassador and you'd like somebody who can really represent South Africa well and do our industry proud. My name is Colin Lansky. When I left the Royal Navy, I started in insurance and then I went and did my NQFs from four to six through UNISA. My name is Belisa Mochani. I did a three-year course, a BCom degree in risk management and um, economics. I'm currently doing my commercial course with Mill Park. I'm Rhys Aaron. I would describe my personality as someone that's very competitive. I also always try and put the best into whatever I do. Hi, my name is Mitesh Schlaka. Started off doing a BCom at Wits University. I then enjoyed insurance the most and I'm currently a master's student at Wits Business School. Hello, my name is Jake Pinaccini. I attended the University of the Western Cape where I completed my LLB. I realized how I could apply it to the insurance industry and then consciously made the decision. My name is Dita Boko Mokhalaboni. I was working in a non-profit organization in education and I met a lady who introduced me to insurance and as they say, there is this history. My name is Kishan Van Mali. I don't know if insurance chose me or if I chose insurance. Having studied risk management, I thought it would be a good opportunity when it did present itself. My name is Gillian Riley. In terms of my competition, I probably shouldn't say this, but I think they're all pretty awesome people. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about Jobik. Jobik's my competition. That's, what, that, that's who I'm here to win against. Yesterday's boardroom session was interesting. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of the winning team, um, but it seemed like it was a surprise who went off uh, from the team that lost. This is the end of the road for you, Reese. I think it's always difficult when one of our colleagues go home. As much as it, as much as it is a competition, um, these are human beings at the end of the day and they've become friends and some of them family. I think Palesa needs to pull up her socks a bit today. She, she faded a little and I was wondering if, you know, having that, that uh, reinstatement card, the immunity, didn't affect her performance because she knew she was safe. I hope that's not the case, but today she doesn't have it anymore, so she's, she, she could go home just like anybody else. Morning, teams. Morning. You're pretty much halfway, so well done for making it this far. Um, we're very fortunate today uh, one of our sponsors who've really been with us since the beginning is, is Sazria. They'll be sponsoring today's task. And Farida Benjamin is here and she's going to take us through what you'll be doing today. My name is Farida Benjamin. I am from Sazria SOC Limited. Congratulations on having made it this far. Thank you very much. And at the end of the day, we'll see how far you still go. <laughs> so, I'll give you a bit about Sazria. We are a state and company established in 1979. Our mandate is to offer special risk insurance covered to South Africa as private individuals as well as government owned buildings and um, corporate and commercial clients as well. We cover um, riots, strikes, terrorism and civil commotion as well as public disorder. So today's task is all around the history of SASRIA over the last financial year. Our financial year runs as from the 1st of April every year till the 31st of March of the following year you will see that within your pack you will have a copy of our integrated report which is the financial results of our last financial year and then if we look at our current financial year where SASRIA finds itself today that is where your task needs to be focused on as well as the future. So in the last financial year SASRIA has managed in the one that you have copy of the financial reports um, SASRIA had attributed the uh, we've actually experienced one of our best financial years in the 2017-18 financial results. Um, we had increased our, our premium to 1.94 billion rand and we also had achieved a 1.3 billion profit, net profit before tax. So for our future sustainability and what SASRIA has been created 
therefore I need you in your task to look at what is the feasibility for Sazria's financial stability and viability in terms of premium growth. What do we need? Our business retention, how do we make sure that entities in South Africa, given that 80% of our business comes from corporate and commercial clients, from a marketing perspective, how do we get the Sazria message across? Are we sure that people understand who Sazria is and what we stand for and have they got adequate cover? Distribution models, how do we actually get Sazria given our premium? What is the best solution to get Sazria to the public? In terms of technology, how does technology play a role in all of these events? What does technology mean to Sazria? Does it pose cyber risks? What's happening out there in the, in the world? Reinsurance, clearly covering terrorism, covering civil commotion, riots, protests. It is one of the most important pillars in Sazria. And investment options. If you've got 8.2 billion rand assets under management, you want to make sure that that money is there when the claims are happening. What should we be looking at in our investment options? And that's your task. Thanks, Rita. Kitty? Morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. From my side, our country is faced with a lot of armchair critics. We always blame the government for not doing anything, whereas we do not actually lift a finger to assist the government. Our industry now has an opportunity to work with government and bring about some initiatives or some suggestions on how do we make it happen in our country. You've got the opportunity. Good luck. Right, thanks, Kitty. Um, just a couple of words of advice from me. Uh, so th there are only six of you remaining. So if your strategy up to now was to hide and avoid being noticed so that you don't get fired, um, that strategy is not going to work going forward. Because if you continue to hide, it's likely that you're going to be the one leaving. So everyone needs to step up and do your bit. Uh, and on that note, uh, the, the team yesterday that worked in silos, I think you would have seen that while we're doing the, the judging, um, or, or rather while we're interrogating your presentation, if, if you work in silos, you can't help each other if somebody gets stuck. So I would advise you against doing that going forward. Work as teams, all, all of you should know what each other is doing. That's how it works best in business. And uh, I think it's a good idea to follow that strategy. Okay, so today's teams, uh, in group one, we've got Colin, Jillian, and Palesa. And in group two, Jake, Kishan, and Mitesh. You're dismissed. What I could do differently, instead of just always playing a supporting role, is to take a leadership role. And, and today, I feel like we, we're a team of three with three leaders. That it's, it's not just that we're all in agreement and we, it's more so every idea that one of us is putting out there, the other two like. Right, I think um, page 42, Beyond 2020 is a good place to start because that's essentially our vision. Yeah. Having one of the stronger players in my team, as well as a potential dark horse, I feel it pushes me even more to ensure that we win the task today. Because if the result doesn't come our team's way, I may be in the firing line. Yeah, I guess it goes again with uh, us understanding what Sazja is. Mm. Most of people don't know what Sazja is. Like for example, my parents, they don't know what Sazja is. Today's energy levels are different. They're very high. I'm very confident in the task that we, the, they gave us. Um, compare that to yesterday's task. So the energy levels are good in the room with the team. Okay, guys, Hi. it's 30 minutes to time. Okay. Okay, please start your thing up. Thank you. Thank you very much. In terms of who I'd be concerned about in my team today, uh, with, with Colin for me being the leader, of course that would leave the two ladies exposed. Um, I can quite confidently say that I think my contribution is has been more uh, than, than that of the other lady. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite happy. I don't want to sound confident, but I'm quite happy with my contribution so far. People are asking where's our set. Thank you. Okay, guys. Hey. Okay, I'm, nice. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. It's 30 minutes to time, eh? Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Start wrapping up. No yeah. surprises today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For today's task, I think Mitesh has taken a strong point. He's had some good ideas. Um, from an input side, perhaps uh, Jake has been lacking a little bit. I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go too much into the political climate. Yeah, no, maybe that's a good idea. Going in today, do I think I have a target in my back? 
it's fairly possible. You never know. Everyone's playing their own game. Um, I think for me, the, obviously, just to be as, contribute as best as you can and, and put a solid performance in so that we can win the task. Uh, if you win the task, hopefully that puts you on a good foot um, going into the uh, elimination or judging. Good afternoon and thank you for affording us this chance to discuss um, the future and the current status of CESIA. Our main aim here was to ensure and further enhance CESIA's aim of contributing to the economic welfare of South Africa as well as establishing itself as, as, as a relevant short-term insurance service. A few ideas we had around growing what, what really makes our bottom line count is premium. And premium comes stems from addressing a need within the insurance industry. So we were looking at uh, perhaps trying to introduce a new rating system, um, industry specific. Um, certain industries are more prone to to labour related uh, instances of of riot and strike. Um, we also need to look at the municipalities which come up quite a bit in terms of service delivery. So in terms of product, um, we believe in pushing the agenda or following the agenda and prerogative of inclusivity. And we believe that there may be value in offering a coupon or product that plays more in the lower LSM space. So where someone would perhaps need cover for 100,000 Rand or 500,000 Rand versus the limits at a reduced rate. Also looking at cyber liability, we believe that almost on a standalone basis, someone not looking for a comprehensive liability policy, perhaps like a governmental agency or government agency, looking just for attacks induced for political gain, there could be space for us to create a product in that regard. If we can, I'd like to talk about our marketing and distribution for a moment. Sure. Um, we, we, we decided it's time that we take a different approach and we look at direct marketing, end user marketing. Um, uh, options such as television ads come to mind and that's, uh, that's a great tool that can be utilized in this instance and we'd also like to start educating via our um, media channels to inform the public of what Sashria does cover and how important it is because a lot of the people that don't have SASRIA cover, I believe are under the misconception that these incidents would be covered on their regular policy, the underlying policy, which is obviously a falsehood. So I think it's, it's important that we push the education, you know, we, we allow them to understand what SASRIA covers in order to ensure that everybody um, takes up the cover. A question to you on that as well, we would, um, you mentioned premium and increases and, pol and products. And then you go and, you s and you've identified your target market in terms of these, uh, the uninsured and your medium is TV ads, direct marketing, field agents and education. And social media. And social yeah. media as an example as well. When do you expect to break even? What's your cost analysis on doing this? Um, the distribution model that you're describing is a very expensive model on a very, very cheap product. That is true, that is true, but we, we do foresee a large increase in the amount of clients that we have, which would then offset to some extent the, um, the risk. But w what we must also understand is we have a dual mandate. We also have a mandate to increase socioeconomic development. And in order to do that, um, in line with the NDP, and in order to do that, we need to make sure we get these people insured for these special risks. Mm -hmm. I think we're, you know, we're out of time, so... Mm -hmm. Thanks for your presentation, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I think that in terms of the mandate, they definitely read the dual mandate. In terms of feasibility of what they're proposing, um, maybe it's due to the pressure of time, but there's some thought processes that wasn't thought through completely in yeah. terms of mm. what we as ASRIA can and cannot mm. offer mm. and at what cost. Um, this would happen. The direct model in the integrated report that they do have clearly was not a feasible model for us to follow as ASRIA. Okay, so they should have been aware of that. They should have been aware of it. Okay. We, we actually are not um, interested in Indeed. doing a full direct mm. model. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for allowing us to present to you today. 
I'm just going to get straight into it. The first uh, thing we'd like to discuss speaks to uh, premium growth, marketing, distribution and technology. Um, our solution for this is to approach the financial institutions in South Africa, um, uh, mainly the banks. The banks have already got the market penetration that we're looking for. What we've discovered is one of the leading banks, has um, the app has been downloaded six million times and that app is viewed once every two weeks. So that's the penetration we're looking for. Now, the, how we want to present Sasha to uh, people through this app is to offer the people on the street a free month worth of Sashria uh, uh, cover on uh, two specific products. The first product we'll be looking at is a motor only with the first loss limit of 100,000 Rand. And the second product would be a motor only and contents with the first loss limit of 100,000 on the motor and 50,000 on the contents. In South Africa, reality is that majority, which is triple BEE community, don't know Sazria and don't even have it. And the only way to have Sazria is if you know Sazria. So my team and I uh, thought that it would be best if we can approach this in the more advertisements. Mm -hmm. Why advertisement? Um, the Brokers Research Council of South Africa recently have um, released the television estimates that above 10 million of viewers tune in every single day. So we thought it would be best if we penetrate that market. Mm -hmm. And we approach in a more of a lifestyle and sporting. Under lifestyle, we can uh, approach a channel to try to squeeze in um, a 30 second advert in there. And that advert, we have to make sure that it showcases the real incident that uh, says you go through. And in that way, um, the community will be educated. They will see what's happening. And in that way, they will want to have seizure and want this cover. In a sporting environment, it can be more of, um, we can have sponsorship or endorsement through sporting channels. And in that case, again, we get the attention and we get the support and we penetrate that market of those, uh, that group of people, that the sporting fans. So therefore, um, Sezria is out there, people know about it, people can then be like, okay, it's fine, I know that, what this covers, therefore I can spend a true end in, in this cover. Yeah, well, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I see it, you know, I was hoping you'd have maybe mm -hmm. something that was aimed more at, at commercial and corporate, because mm -hmm. it feels like you're, you're only really addressing sort of one part of, of our mandate as, as Sezria, an important part. Mm -hmm. But of course, to ensure this, the financial sustainability of our business, we have to bring in revenue. Yeah. These other projects yeah. that you're talking about would almost appear in our CSI section of, of our report yeah. to awesome. say, look guys, we've got to get everybody to have free yeah. insurance sure. or give them a policy. And we're not expecting to make any money out of it because I don't think we will. No, um, not on this outlay. But in the long run, we will. I think it's important because I think, yes, it's not true 100% of the time, but, but for a large part of the time, it is true. I mean, when you're dealing with, with uh, commercial and corporates, for the most part, you are dealing with, with a broker or, or somebody that's been able to give you accurate advice and, and adequate advice. They'd have to, you know, otherwise they could potentially lose their own job. So while I understand what you guys are saying from, from, from a revenue perspective and, and, and increasing profits, I think... I don't want to say that that part of the business is taken care of, it's, it's not necessarily, but I think it's better taken care of than a lot of the, the, the South African consumers that literally have got no idea that they're not covered for this sort of thing. Uh, is, is there a trend that you're seeing in, in our business from a loss perspective? I mean, where we are now, where we will be in six months time mm -hmm. as a business, if, if, if we're not doing any of these other projects and we just carry on as we are, do you see us heading towards any problems? I've heard a lot of talk about, you know, it, it, the thing is it's very difficult, to, the predictability of these sort of things is very difficult. Well, um, well is it though? I mean, I mean you've, you've obviously got access to like the last couple of years uh, of our financials, so you can see yeah, that. Yes. You live in this country, I'm yes. assuming. Yes. yes. So you know what's happening here. Yes. So, but your losses, I mean, in, in terms of in specifically stuff like terrorism and things like that, we haven't really seen it. It doesn't mean it's never going to happen. But you don't really have, we have historical data in other territories, but in our own, not so much. Now, one thing that I think is quite important Until is... Then you're out of time. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you're dismissed. You. <laughs> I had a clear idea of who they're targeting and it's blue collar workers mm. and that's where they got stuck. Yeah. Mm. Standard says they're blue collar workers. Yeah. 
Well, it was just, to me, it was just one massive CSI project, yeah. um, which, yeah. which is great, but it's not going to help us to remain relevant, relevant and profitable. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Happy. Still scoring, but happy. Kitty? I'm happy, thanks. Okay, let's get them back in here. Welcome back. I'm going to hand straight over to Farida and yet again I'd like to, to thank Sazria for their sponsorship today. It was a tough task. Uh, Farida? Oh, we couldn't make it too easy now, can we? No. Mm -hmm. So just on the task in itself, um, thank you for, for your work that both teams have done on it. Um, if we look at what portrayed itself in your presentations, I think there was some um, um, innovative ideas coming through from, from one of the teams in terms of um, products and, and lines that we should be looking at um, and in terms of the mandate as to premium growth business retention. I think there was missed opportunities as well um, in terms of where we are. So if we look at, at business growth, this set of questions or this set of bullet points for both teams gave you guys opportunity to look at the strategic intent for the organization over the next five uh, three to five years um, and this would be the level of when you have to pre as an executive team present to your board you need have to have touched on all of these um, options I think that both teams spent um, time in terms of looking at the premium growth and not necessarily unpack the full extent of what you could have utilized um, the other points for I uh, also think that um, in terms of the understanding of SASRIA's mandate and the duality of our mandate, I think both teams actually understood that, that there is a dual mandate. I think though that one of the teams focused more on the second part of our mandate, which is critically important to us as well, around the social impact of what SASRIA does and the um, growth in terms of social. Um, but in order to be that part of our mandate, we first have to be sustainable. And we have no government guarantee, which means that we have to retain and grow our business all the time. Um, so I think there were some missed opportunities and some nice thought processes in, in, in distribution and other ideas as well. Um, what I do think that was missed as well is the importance and relevance of our partnership model and how important um, the Asian companies, that we refer to as Asian companies, but the industry is to us. Asasria. And I think there's a missed opportunity on how to better utilize that overall. Thank you. Thanks, Farida. Katie? Yeah, from my side, I just wanted to thank the team for the presentations as well. It was great to hear one of the teams coming out very strongly around education, making sure that everybody is aware out there what Sasria is about. Um, what I probably would give you advice going forward on is when you do have opportunities like this and you have to prepare something for the board, try and structure your presentation in such a way that it's got pointers so that even if you are actually asked about something that's in a presentation, you don't lose your thought or your line of thought. So you can still remember, don't, don't have too much detail because with too much detail, you can derail yourself actually. So just have pointers as to what you want to address and stick to those. Okay. okay. Thanks, Kitty. Um, for me, you know, I think there's a, there's a trap that we can all fall into as, as South Africans. And that is for us to assume that our state-owned companies, you know, have a primary responsibility, which is to look after everybody in, in the country. But uh, as Farida said, if you, if you ignore our actual primary responsibility, which is to m remain relevant and sustainable, then you can't really deliver on the second one. So, you know, if you spend too much time focusing on our, on our social responsibilities and you ignore the business realities, uh, that's really putting the business in danger. You know, also engaging in costly marketing um, and, and technology type projects um, can really hurt the business, particularly in a time when, when claims frequency and severity is, is increasing. And, and it, was, it was a little bit disappointing to me 
to see some of you not really paying attention to, to what was happening in South Africa um, and what could be happening in South Africa over the next you know, one or two years, given that we're, we're going into uh, probably the most intense election year that we've had since 94 and what that means for SASRIA. So, I, you know, I was a little bit disappointed that there was a lack of focus um, on that. The winning group to me today, and, and we, we deliberated on it a long time, um, there, there was no group that said, or, or that, that SASRIA felt was, yes, this is the idea that's really going to float our business for the next couple of years. This is what we should, this is what we should focus on. Um, but one group was definitely more innovative and spent a lot more time understanding the environment. And so the winning group today is, is Jake, Mitesh and Kishan. Um, so, so well done guys. Um, you, you had some really progressive ideas and I, and I think there's actually going to be one or two things there that, that Sazri are going to explore um, after this meeting. Um, Jake, you can pat yourself on the back because you had the highest score today as well. <laughs> Thank you. I was yeah. certain I was going home. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah, so, so well done, guys. I, I think that uh, it was good to see um, some, some good innovation. And I think we've seen this a couple of times on this program that our sponsors have actually walked away with, with something valuable that they might be able to, to implement uh, following a bit more research and, and investigation. So yeah, that unfortunately leaves a losing team. Mm. Gillian, who do you think should go home today? In terms of our team effort today, um, I'd have to say that I think and it was quite clear, clear, I think, from the onset that I think Colin personally was the strongest in our team. Unfortunately, I'd have to say Palesa. Palesa? I think Joe. Colin, you look like you're actually not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you no, wish you weren't. I'm not, I don't even know what you think right now. No. You don't know what it feels like to leave yeah. the chat. So who, who do you think should leave today? It's a difficult, I mean, based on today's performance, I think they both contributed equally. So it's hard to say from today who I suggest, but from previous rounds, I would say Belisa. Belisa? You didn't have the lowest score today. Gillian, I'm afraid you're leaving us. Not a problem. I've enjoyed the competition so much and thanks to everybody and to the sponsors and to Sazri and to everybody. It's been an incredible experience. Thank you. You can leave the room. Thank you. The results of the competition today was, uh, for me, it was actually quite unexpected. Uh, the reason for that was I actually felt that my team won. Um, but as we've seen in this competition, you really don't know. Right until you're in that room, right at the end, that's the only time that, uh, that the proper result comes out. Uh, it's getting tough now. Um, and it's only going to get tougher as we move through the last few tasks. We still expect teamwork, but it's definitely an individual game from this point onwards. So keep that in mind as you move through the next tasks. You're dismissed. Thank you. I was very pleasantly surprised about the outcome. Uh, our, <laughs> our, truth be told, we came out of our task certain that our team lost. So for our team to have won is a big victory and I really can't believe that I scored the highest. We believe that the Insurance Apprentice is a facility that allows people to showcase their talents and also it leads to new leaders in the industry coming forth. Tasks like the ones that we do throughout the program allows for us to think differently, bringing new ideas to light and helping us as insurance companies to also see what young talent is bringing to South Africa insurance industry.